hundreds of complex electronic circuits. Hey guys, welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Today we're going to look at a product that's going to help us deal with a problem that we are all too familiar with. You guessed it, of course, we are talking about capacitors. This is a Pentium 4 motherboard straight from the capacitor plague era and these caps are in bad shape, they need to go. So this is the desoldering gun that we're going to check out in this video review. It is the gjs 998 p The product is sponsored by Banggood. I asked them if they could send me a review sample and they did. So we're going to use this product and desolder a few capacitors. Let's have a look what's inside the box. Okay, so here we've got the actual desoldering gun. We're going to have a look at that in more detail later. This is the trigger and it's got a little dial here where you can set the temperature and it does come with the Australian plug which is awesome. We also get a uh, station where you can basically put the gun in and comes with a little uh, sponge. You basically put water on there and that just lets you clean the tip. Um, I think this is a cleaning uh, rod for the uh, tip and also comes with two air filters, I believe, and there's a little instruction manual. I'm going to have a quick look in here and see if there's anything interesting in there to talk about. Well, unfortunately, this booklet is all in Chinese, so I'm not quite sure what it's trying to tell me. So, yeah, we're kind of flying blind, but hopefully this shouldn't be too hard to figure out. So the motherboard that we're using today is the AOPEN. AX45F4DM. It's got an SIS chipset, nothing special about it. Doesn't have a universal AGP port, so really, this is not a board I'm seeing myself using it. And the caps are in really bad shape, so this is a, an excellent guinea pig to do a little bit of desoldering. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna plug in the power and we'll have a look what happens. So the temperature light here has just gone on and. Yep, so that seems, it definitely makes a lot of noise, so that seems to be quite powerful. So we're just gonna wait for the temperature to reach uh, its uh, adjust, uh, set temperature, and then we're gonna start doing some desoldering. Alrighty, I think this is ready to go. I'm gonna start with desoldering this one right here. So that's these two. Um, yeah, so I believe you just have to put it on, on top of it and then just wiggle it in a circular fashion. There you go. Let's see if it comes out. That's the first one. Alrighty. Let's try the next one. Just underneath. There it is. All right, let's do the next one. There it is. And the next one.
you go. That one just fell out, more or less. And we've got two more to go. And there you go. So yeah, that actually worked really straightforward and without any issues. So I'm just gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna check out the unit in a bit more detail and go over the specifications and the pricing and all of that. Now, before we take a closer look at the unit, there's one more thing we need to ensure. And that is if replacement uh, capacitors actually fit through the holes. If the desoldering job isn't done properly and there's still some solder left, you're gonna have a hard time putting replacement capacitors in. So uh, I've got a bag here. This is uh, a set of 100 uh, capacitors. I tend to buy them in bulk because the pricing is just a lot better. And these are Panasonic 3300 uh, microfarad rated at 6.3 volts. I'm not gonna use those for the motherboard, but they should be uh, enough to just test whether or not the, the holes are uh, properly done. So let's have a look if they go through. So that one is fine. Let's try the next one. That one is fine too. That one is too small. Need a smaller capacitor for that one, but let's try this one. Yeah. They seem to work fine. So that did a very good job at desoldering all the solder and leaving the holes nice and uh, yeah, nice and free so you can stick the new capacitors through. Okay, so the desoldering gun has cooled down. Let's have a closer look at the unit and especially the cleaning which you should be doing after every desoldering job. So the front nozzle, you just unscrew this bit here, it comes off and then you can pull out uh, this part here and this is where these cleaning rods come in you basically uh, you just stick them through here and you can push through any of the uh, residue solder and it, yeah something fall, fell out just now now uh, I had a look on the website so in terms of pricing you're looking at uh, 134 US dollars and the nozzle, the supplied nozzle is one millimeter. However, it states there are also 1.5 and two uh, millimeter nozzles. So they might be available uh, as an accessory. Now there's more to the cleaning. Let's just move these parts aside. And that is this bit here. And it comes out just by pulling this back and then you can pull this out. Um, you can see one of these filters here. So this is basically the same filter uh, where you get two uh, replacement parts. And let's have a look in here if there's any any solder left. Yeah, a bit of solder came out, not much, but there's definitely some solder in there. Uh, I'm just gonna figure out how to push this back. I'll probably just use a screwdriver or something like that. Yeah, so that's basically the cleaning procedure. And I do recommend that you do this after each uh, solder job, just in order to keep the unit uh, nice, clean and working. One more thing I want to mention is that this particular model has a double pump, so a stronger suction. There is a cheaper version of this, uh, but I believe it has less suction power. So what do I think of this unit? I can compare it with another desoldering station I have. I think it's from Dino Tools. And this desoldering gun is a lot stronger. The double pump action definitely works and the process is a lot smoother. Whereas with the other unit, I definitely had to go uh, around two or three times sometimes to desolder a capacitor. This one did it in the first go. So if you don't have a lot of time, but you do want to desolder some capacitors, this is a really good investment. It gets the job done really quickly and you can just get on with it. As always guys, if I haven't covered something that you want to know, just leave me a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer the question. And that's it for this video guys. I see you soon with another video.